Hi, my name is Dr. Judith Joseph, and I'm a Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellow at the NYU Child Study Center. Thank you for joining us for our Grand Rounds Lecture Series, where we get to talk with experts in the field of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. We have the pleasure of having Dr. Katherine Lord from the Center for Autism and the Developing Brain at the New York Presbyterian Hospital. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. You gave an excellent talk this morning about the diagnosis and the assessment of autism spectrum disorders across a lifespan. Can you tell us more about what you meant when you talked about the importance of looking at positive factors to recognize and also the lack of certain factors? I think often when we're, th we're thinking about diagnoses, we think about lists of behaviors that are very unusual. Mm -hmm. So you think that I'm going to make a diagnosis by seeing these things that nobody else ever does. Mm -hmm. So in autism, they're the kinds of things that people notice right away when a young child does, like flapping his hands or looking at his fingers mm -hmm. or um, somebody who is you know, labeling subway stops one after another and can't stop. Also important are the things that the kids don't do that ordinary kids do automatically. Mm -hmm. So seeking to share enjoyment, seeking attention, seeking to share um, activities, um, and automatically communicating. If someone gets in the way, a child with autism may try to just move that person rather than looking at them like, what's the matter with you? And those, are, those factors can be very important and are really critical in making a diagnosis and then deciding how you're going to treat autism. Wow. And also you talked about autism spectrum disorders as being developmental disorders. What does that mean? I think it really means two different things. One is that um, autism changes with development. Mm -hmm. So a child who can't speak and who is very young may look different with autism than a child, than that same child may look once they learn how to talk. And they may be able to communicate then, but they also may say unusual things. And so in some ways they look less autistic, and in other ways they look more autistic. In addition, we think that having autism may actually affect your development in ways that it doesn't have to. So one of the things a study found was that when kids on the playground with autism were approached by other kids, often the kids with autism just took off. If we can help the child with autism stay put mm -hmm. and realize that they can benefit from this interaction, then we may be able to prevent mm -hmm. other kinds of problems and actually give the child a good social opportunity. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that if we think about autism as being a developmental disorder, that we should also be worried about things like learning disabilities? I think how they learn is what's important, okay. and I think it includes both abilities and disabilities. So we may be able to prevent certain mm -hmm. kinds of problems by helping the child learn mm -hmm. things that they might not do on their own, but that they're actually capable of learning. And just as if I was, if I was trying to teach you, you know, complex algebra and you couldn't do simple arithmetic, the algebra would be very difficult, but I might be able to teach you in steps and lead up to it. And another exciting mm -hmm. point of your talk was how there are new ways to recognize autism earlier on in life, say in like toddlers. Yeah. I think it's important to be clear that those are conditional diagnoses and you've got to keep checking. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say for, you, know, you have autism for life when you're a toddler. Mm -hmm. But we do have strategies where we can see certain kinds of social difficulties and see other kinds of behaviors that strongly predict that this child has autism as young as toddlers. So what can parents do about mm -hmm. autism, and when should we start? Yeah. I think a parent who is concerned mm -hmm. that their child is less socially responsive, mm -hmm. that, um, that their child doesn't know them, that their child doesn't respond to their name, or that their child is doing unusual things, mm -hmm. then it's worth saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. The child may not have autism, and that would be great. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you get an assessment and you can learn what's going on. There are many, many different things we can do in terms of behavioral interventions and in terms of changing that child's social world that can really make a difference. Sounds very hopeful. Yeah, it is. I think things are getting better all the time. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. We learned so much from you. Thank you.